Hey everybody, I'm BJ Mine, aka the Terrible Australian, a super podcast, and welcome to the fifth edition of my 2014 Nick Video Reviews. After this one, I'm going to be talking about Richard Linklater's critically acclaimed film Boyhood, and as well as the fact based uh, drama Kamiko the Treasure Hunter. So let's get right into it. First up, Boyhood. Got my myth guide here so I can read you what it's all about. Richard Linklater takes his often unorthodox approach to filmmaking to, to new heights, charting the development of a boy, Mason, between the ages of 6 and 18, filmed over 12 years as the actor, Ella Coltrane, himself, grew up. In an unprecedented undertaking, beginning, began in 2002 and returned to periodically over the years, actors Ethan Hawke and Patricia Arquette as Mason's parents and Linklater's daughter, Lorelei, um, as Mason's sister, also grow naturally, in sync with their characters and creating a unique coming-of-age tale, as well as revealing deeply, deeply moving study of aging. Now, this film is def has been acclaimed as one of the, one of the year's best. Uh, I believe it has a 99% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's already been... Um, uh, a lot of people are calling it as the best film of the year. I'm one of those people now too. I think it's a fantastic film. Uh, definitely, without a doubt, um, Richard Linklater's masterpiece. This it, it's a truly fantastic film. It's a very simple film, a very gentle film, but there's so much to it that just makes it fantastic. I mean, and it's not just the whole like easy. I know some people might be put off a little bit by the whole gimmick of you know shooting it over 12 years and seeing these characters grow over the course of that time, but it actually works in favour for the movie and it doesn't feel like a gimmick at all. And what's interesting is, um, as you see these characters, and not just um, the character of Mason, uh, but also his family and his sister as the, throughout this 12 year span, you see that they all sort of change as characters over time. They sort of begin it in one place and, and are completely different by the end of the film. And and also it's kind of again it's sort of like um like later sort of uh, it's more like a vignette film so you sort of go to various points of these characters' lives but but thematically it 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 all just is the same throughout and you see these characters at their highs their lows and there's also a beautiful honesty about it there's. It, it, watching the film, like even though my childhood gr growing up into an adult was a bit di was different from uh, the main characters in this film, but a lot of things that sort of happened in the film to him just really rang true to me and felt real. And it's also surprisingly funny as well. Like it, it's a drama, but it's also uh, very funny as well. And um, and also the performances are great. And it's interesting just to see how these act characters, especially the young ca actors, um, Ella Coltrane and uh, Laura Lai Linkley, how their performances change throughout the years. And also Ethan Hawke and Patricia Arquette are both fantastic and the great performances from them. I honestly think they both could easily get nominated for Oscars for their roles, particularly Ethan Hawke. Um, great direction, uh, beautifully well written by Richard Linklater, and it's it's just a really fantastic film, definitely worthy of all the praise that it receives. Um, like I said, it's not a movie that and I think a lot of why a lot of people love it is because it, it, the things that happen in this film just resonates with people. Like we can we know what these char what these characters are going through because and everything, so it it resonates with us, and we and we can find a and it just speaks to us as human beings. And um, it's a fantastic film. Like I said, it's definitely Richard Linklater's masterpiece, and it's a film I can, that's definitely going to be on my top ten of the year. Um, so if I had to give this a rating, it's definitely five out of five. So, um, so definitely when you see, go check this film out when it comes to a cinema near you, because it's worth it. It may be a bit long, because it's an almost three-hour film, but it just flies by pretty quickly. Um, now on to the next film, which is uh, Kamiko the Treasure Hunter. A beaten v VHS copy of the Coen Brothers' Fargo provides the catalyst for an offbeat adventure 
in the sweetly enduring character study from, an, from another brotherly team, David and Nathan Zellner. Kamika, Academy Award nominee Rinko Kinkuchi, leads a lonely existence in a crumbled Tokyo apartment, beleaguered, sorry, by an overbearing mother and a deadhead job. Convinced that the suitcase of money buried in Fargo actually exists, Kamiko steals a credit card and escapes to the wintry landscape of Minnesota in search of the lost cash. Now, I think a, a lot of you probably have heard this story before. This actually is, it was in, this film is inspired by something that actually happened in real life. But interesting enough, the actual, um, the true story is actually a lot more complex than that. And if not, the whole sort of this, um, this Japanese woman go, um, wanting to go find the money that was in the film Fargo and and all that. That's sort of something that actually did happen, but the, like I said, the truth, the actual true story behind that true story is a lot more interesting and a lot more heartbreaking as well. So, um, and that's what I was kind of expecting with this film. I thought it'd be something along the line like that, but um, the film isn't. It sort of does take this approach of this, of, and follows this, um, it follows this approach of this, you know, this uh, urban legend kind of story. Um, and while I think it is a, a solid film, I kind of wish there was a bit more to it. And I think it had the well, potential to be a really interesting sort of um, a psychological study on this woman who, who clearly has a mental illness, and I kind of wish the film kind of delved into that a little bit more, but it doesn't really. Um, actually, I was—I forgot to bring this up forward. This film kind of reminded me of um, of the film Shadow of the Vampire from 2000. Like, that movie, even though it's um, based on the making, the, the making of the film Nosferatu, but it sort of takes the sort of um, the urban legend approach to that story, like this, and the urban legend was that Max Shrek, who played uh, Count Orlok in that film, was really a vampire. Even though, but we all know that's not true. But so this film kind of does that. It sort of takes the legend, the urban legend aspect of what happened to this um, this tragic story of what happened to this, uh, this Japanese woman. Um, and sort of does a film based on that urban legend aspect, so. But, um, like I said, I think it, it, there's, there's definitely things about it I think they could have done more with, there's aspects of it, most like, most of it, the sort of psychological aspects, I kind of wish they sort of dug a bit deeper, deeper in, I'm oh, sorry, did it, um, did a bit more with, because there's a lot of interesting aspects about the film, but I just didn't feel like it sort of did it in a way that was really satisfying for me. But that's just to say the film's bad. Like, it's a solid film overall. Um, Rinko Kinkuchi is fantastic in the film. You, even though why I think the film the film doesn't... The script doesn't really sort of dig into her character, but she brings a lot to the role, and she sort of... And she sort of puts us into the mindset of this character. And also... Uh, it's very well directed. It looks great, um, and also the sort of supporting cast that sort of uh, the character of Kamiko meets during the course of the film are all really good. They're all really good performances from the supporting cast. So overall, I will admit I was I was a little bit disappointed by the film, but overall, it, for, but for what it is, it's still decent. It's still a solid film overall. Um, so if I had to give this a rating, I'd give it about a three out of five, but it's one I definitely would like to um, check out again at some point. So uh, that's the end of this uh, fifth edition of my 2014 video reviews. Uh, keep a look out for the sixth edition in which I will be talking about the Jimi Hendrix biopic uh, Jimmy Always By My Side and as well as the musical comedy God Help The Girl. So keep a look out for that one and I'll see you guys later. See everyone.